you have an example of using a linear layout in your app? Uh, well, even here, uh, this cluster of three cards uh, is, a, is a horizontal linear layout where we just add uh, child views, like three cards, and then we set um, uh, layout width to zero deep and layout weight uh, to one, and essentially it instructs a linear layout to take however much width it has at runtime and uh, distribute it evenly based on uh, the relative weights, uh, distribute it evenly between uh, all the, um, all the uh, child views uh, in that group. So that's one example. And another example would be uh, over here that you have new and updated games and uh, the more button, which is a cluster header, it's also a simple horizontal linear layout. So when things are uh, simple, you don't necessarily want to start writing custom layouts. Don't just use relative layout everywhere because it's more versatile than linear layout, for example. That's just overkill for simpler things. So when a designer gives you a mock, how do you go about starting to build that app? Uh, so hopefully at that point, uh, like we talked, uh, we have not just one mock, but rather at least two or three that show how, um, how the uh, design scales between uh, small screens and large screens. And then I want to identify um, uh, building blocks. So if we talk about something like a card, which appears in a lot of places in the app, I wouldn't want necessarily to start like, implementing a lot of variants of uh, the same card based on uh, if it needs to show a small image or a big image or maybe show a one uh, line title instead of two line titles. So I'm trying to identify these uh, blocks and uh, implement them as like, you know, standalone classes, standalone layouts, and then start building uh, on top of those. So you start from um, text view, image view, uh, spinner and whatnot to build uh, smaller blocks. And then um, hopefully you are able to uh, keep on taking those small blocks and uh, build uh, larger blocks while reusing the same basic set of blocks. And what's nice about it is even though you spend maybe a little bit more time up front, uh, it becomes easier, especially if the design is consistent in how it applies its language to evolve the app and to add new features. If the design is consistent, then you keep on seeing the same blocks being used in uh, different configurations again and again. And then uh, that's where your initial investment starts paying off where you don't treat implementation of a new screen as a brand new thing, but rather maybe 50, 60, 70, however much percent is already there. Maybe it needs a little bit tweaking with color, so maybe typography or whatnot. But hopefully if the design is consistent, then the implementation is also easier to um, uh, move forward if you already build for that. And uh, it also becomes easier to uh, apply a redesign just on the visual level. If you want to tweak colors, if you want to tweak typography, if you want uh, to, um, to add maybe uh, like we did uh, in uh, Lollipop where you have these uh, ripple effects when you press something. If you have a few uh, pieces that you keep on reusing, your styles, your layouts, then um, you do that visual refresh in a smaller number, in a fewer number of places and then hopefully they get applied uh, consistently everywhere. So for me, I want to place the focus at the beginning on getting the data right, especially for an app that is uh, getting its data from external sources. And then uh, do uh, closer to the pixels, uh, refine the pixels once you have the data uh, to do the grid, to do the typography, colors, animations, transitions, whatnot, however much time uh, you have uh, to spend on that. And I think it would be the same if you have something like a Twitter client like, you know, you can start by um, pixel perfecting uh, your layouts with some fake data. And then you discover that, um, like, you know, you, you know nothing about fetching the data from Twitter and it takes you the next three months just to fetch the data. Or uh, it, just an example. So I prefer to start from the data. I think about this as an iceberg where you see the uh, pretty pixels as like maybe like five, 10 percent above uh, the surface. And then there's a lot of uh, work going uh, below the surface, if you will, uh, to support uh, that. Um, you mentioned the tip of the iceberg is what people see. So what exactly is going on below the surface? How do you see the Google Play app? 
Uh, so uh, what happens below the surface is, uh, first of all, to get the data uh, from the network. So you have, uh, so uh, like, you know, authenticate uh, to the uh, server and get the data and then maybe uh, to cache it locally so that the next time you go, uh, like, you know, you go from uh, the stream into the details page and back into the stream, uh, we should be using cached data, cached images, uh, so that, um, like, you know, we don't put too much strain on the battery and also the app already shows the information that it has. Uh, then you have uh, support for multiple accounts. Then you have uh, maybe persisting a few bits here and there in the database. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the billing flows, which is um, uh, most of that work is done on the server to integrate with different uh, payment methods. And then there's the work on the client as well. Uh, and um, uh, another big part of the uh, Play Store is uh, downloading and installing apps and games, we are on the Play Store side, we are in charge of downloading, installing, uh, updating apps, and uh, so that's another big chunk of, um, once again, pretty much all of these have their surface bits, which are pixels on the screen, and then there's a lot of work going uh, behind the, uh, below the surface to, uh, to bring that information for the right account uh, and uh, to put that on the screen. It's clear that you've worked on many different iterations of Google Play app. How do you keep up to date with the latest news in Android? Uh, there's, um, there's a lot of uh, information on uh, Google Plus uh, from uh, very active Android uh, developers who uh, put out a lot of tutorials. And um, uh, just from uh, different blogs, uh, sometimes I don't necessarily go and uh, read deeply um, a certain, um, a certain series about like recycler view or, um, or a view page or whatnot or like how to uh, configure the toolbar and action bar. I kind of try to put it like that I know that there's a lot of information in there and then uh, when I do need uh, that deep level of information, then I go uh, to those uh, resources. Well, thank you so much for your time, Kirill. I think our students will really enjoy hearing your perspective on what it's like to be an Android app engineer.